Well, hey, CT at home, I hope that you guys are having a great day. I am so excited because today we are starting a new discussion called Power Up, and we're going to talk about what it looks like to power up our faith because of the Holy Spirit. Toby's got a great message for us, uh, and I really think it's going to encourage us and also really bring some knowledge around the topic of who the Holy Spirit is and the role that he plays in our life. So let's do this, let's get ready, and let's listen to this message from Toby. Well, hey, everybody. It is so good to be with you today. All of you that are joining us for CT Online, a special welcome to our CT at Home family that's growing. My goodness, what's happen, happening right now in Colorado is amazing. We're hearing so many stories of how God is gathering people together uh, in neighborhoods in Colorado. I want you to know I can't wait. I'm going to come soon to see you and spend some time with you. Uh, I am wound up about this noodle conversation over the next four weeks that begins today. I'm wound up a little bit because I don't know that you can't tell it because of our audio engineers are so good, but it is loud behind me, man. So I'm a little amped up by the sound, but I'm mostly excited about the opportunity that we have to talk about this concept of moving forward. So if you don't hear anything else I say today, I want you to hear me say this. By the way, why do pastors always say, if you don't hear anything else I say, don't you hear it all? But here's what I want you to hear today. It is time for you and I to move on and be done with the season that we've been in. I don't know where you live. I'm not talking about go going to a restaurant. I'm not talking about vaccines or politics or anything that's controversial. I'm not talking about what's happening around you. I'm saying within you, it is time to move on. It's time to move forward. I believe the Lord has spoken to me that a new season, it's a new chapter for you and for me, but it is a decision number one of our will to say, I am done, I'm going to move forward. Isn't it crazy that our team would decide to come to this place? I don't know where you live, I don't know if this is a national chain here. It's called the main event. It's just, I'm sure they've shown you a little footage of it. It's just, it's, it's filled with uh, all kinds of games, arcade games, uh, a bowling alley behind you from where you're watching me right now. Uh, and it's interesting to me, they chose this place because when I walked in today, I thought, man, I'm so glad the power's back on. <laughs> For those of you who don't live in Texas, uh, we are have come out of a season recently uh, that I know you've heard about on the national news. This isn't fake news. It hasn't been exaggerated. We had what for many of you would be a spring day, but for the state of Texas who isn't prepared for these things, sub-zero temperatures, blowing ice and snow, which was inconvenient but the end result of that was there are many here even weeks after this record-breaking, unprecedented storm hit our entire state who are without power. And we found out how helpless we are without power. Now, this is a principle that you'll find in the Bible, not about electricity, but about your heart and your soul and your life. You'll find it uh, referred to over and over and over again. The greatest church planter this side of the cross of Jesus was a man named Paul. It's an unbelievable story. I'd encourage you to go read in the book of Acts some of his story. He had given his life to killing and persecuting, imprisoning Christians, and God literally, a voice from heaven thundered at him and struck him blind on the way to one of his assassination uh, missions and saw his name was changed to Paul and he became as I said one of the, the greatest church planner wrote most of the New Testament he was intelligent uh, he was uh, very he was not simply street smart he was book smart uh, he had had theological training uh, his entire life and he said this in 1st Corinthians 4 and verse 20 that the kingdom of God that this place where we live, the, the, uh, uh, the realm of our existence, 
uh, our neighborhoods, our families, our workplaces. The kingdom of God, it's not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. And it's why we've called these little conversations powered up because if we're going to move on, it's going to be in the strength of God's power and not our own. I love what my friend Chris Hodges says. He says, we must become convinced that what we have is not enough and all that we have is not close to what God has for us. We need God's power and we need the commitment to depend upon God's power to experience everything God has for us. And so I hope that I will give you hope over the next four weeks about practical ways that you can begin to experience God's power through the person, not the concept or the idea, but the person of the Holy Spirit. So I want to instruct you, but I also want to motivate you to fall in love. Many of you for the first time, lots of you again, with the person of the Holy Spirit and what He wants to do in your life. What, what, are, you, what are you thinking? Is there some shifting in your, in your seat right now when you hear the word Holy Spirit? Uh, do you think about old time religious TV and Holy Ghost power and you ain't got no interest in a ghost? And uh, basically, let me just, the elephant in the room, when I say Holy Spirit, it happens every time. I watch people in the rooms that I'm in, I watch them, their eyes kind of get wider and sometimes they whisper to a neighbor, they shift in their seat because they think weird. So let me just start the whole deal off this. Look at me. The Holy Spirit is not weird. People are weird. And, they get, and the Holy Spirit gets the blame. I'm not calling you to be weird. I'm calling you to be filled with God's power. And I believe that God does not want to turn you into a Bible-banging weirdo. God wants to transform your character into the very best future uh, of who you are. But at some point, what the Bible tells us is this decision about power and about plugging into the Holy Spirit and God's power, you've got to decide if you're in or not. This is not something that you can stick your toe in the water, say, I'll give it a shot. This has got to be a decision of your will that you're going in. What do you mean by that? Well, when you read the New Testament in its entirety, and this is where I want to give you some information for a moment. I want you to just stay with me. You will see that a healthy, spirit-filled, empowered walk with God is about when God's power and plan meets a decision of your will to commit your heart to Him. Let's talk about those three commitments that the Bible teaches us uh, that are, is our part of, of experiencing this spirit-empowered life. It begins, the first one is a private one. Is it a, it's a commitment to the person of Jesus Christ in your life. The Bible is clear. You are saved by grace through faith. This is not of yourself so that no, no one can boast. Only you can decide for yourself if you're going to commit your life to Jesus. Think about it in a marriage kind of illustration. When I asked my wife Micah 35 plus years ago to spend the rest of her life with me, at some point I had to decide Am I going to give my life to her? Not, did I know everything about being a husband? No. I had no clue what was on. Was I nervous about it? Yes. All I knew is that I wanted to spend the rest of my life uh, with this woman. Jesus is not calling us to have all of the answers, to not have some fears, maybe even some doubts. He's looking for a heart that in spite of those things will say, I'm going to commit my life to you, Jesus, the best way I know how. I'm going to serve you for the rest of my days, and I'm going to walk with you. Teach me how to grow. And that's an important 
commitment many of you have made privately at some point in your life. It is a great place to start, but it is not a great place to finish because the Bible teaches that beyond that personal commitment, that night that I knelt down and I handed Micah a ring and said, will you marry me? That was just Micah and I. This is pre-social media. We didn't even have it. Like, we couldn't even Instagram it, right? It was just us, private. Now, can you imagine if I would have said to her, baby, I want to marry you, but here's the deal. Let's don't tell anybody. Let's don't have a wedding. And I'm, I don't want to wear a ring. It's just uncomfortable on my finger to wear. How do you think that would have gone over with her? And the Bible teaches that your wedding to Jesus after a private commitment is a public one. It's called baptism. Now, here's the interesting thing. When I say the word baptism, most people think water. Right? And, and there's an aspect to baptism. I mean, you were sprinkled or you're dunked or whatever the tradition was. But instantly you think baptism, water. Well, the word baptism, although it uses water, it's using something physical to talk about something uh, spiritual. And the word baptism, baptizo in the Greek, literally means to dip, to immerse, to fully uh, give your life to Jesus. This commitment of baptism is not to save you. You've already been saved. You are saved by grace through faith. You can't get dipped enough. You can't pray enough. You can't do enough good works to get saved. But once you have been saved because you are beginning to grow in a relationship with Jesus, you go public with your faith in baptism. You immerse yourself. You go all in. You let the world know that the best way you know how you have committed your life to Jesus. And I know hundreds of you have done that. There are some of you who haven't. If you're from Colorado uh, to Pittsburgh uh, to West Texas to East Texas, if you're part of our CT at Home group, you want to be baptized, we'll help you. We'll help you. Uh, we'll help you set up a baptism in an in a indoor swimming pool. Uh, if you're a long way, we'll connect a, you to a church building where your CT at Home group can come and uh, I'll promise you, I, I know pastors in those areas. I can find somebody that I'll, I'll send them some money if I have to rent their building to let you be baptized. But a part of this power coming upon you is dependent upon your willingness to take your next step with Jesus. And at the end of this message, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you about, oh, if you'll let me know, me know personally, I promise you I'll find a way and I will, I will get set up a place for you to take that what I call that second step of commitment that commitment to be baptized and quite honestly just sit back I'm gonna take a little while today because we got to set this up L listen to me most of my life this discussion this is where it stopped you make a private commitment to Jesus serving him the best way you know how and then you go public with your faith the problem is the Bible talks about a, nurse, a third step, a third commitment that you make uh, that I'm kind of like the guys in the story I'm going to show you in a moment. I, I just had never heard of. I want to show you this story in Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Acts, for those of you new to the Bible, it's the story of the birth of the church. It's not the acts of the, of the apostles. It's really the acts of the Holy Spirit. Jesus has told his disciples, it's going to be better for you if I go away. Because if I go away, I'm going to send the Comforter. And he sent the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to them. And that you see what happens in a better life filled with God's Spirit. In Acts chapter 5, here's what's going on. There's a guy named Philip who's a follower of Jesus. And the Bible tells us that he went down to a city in Samaria and he proclaimed Christ there. When they believed Philip as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. So Peter preaches this message about Jesus being a better way. People said, I'm in. I want to give my life to Jesus. On the spot, they took that next step in a public profession, their faith. And it says, when the apostles in Jerusalem, now the home base for the church was back in Jerusalem. It's where the, it's where the disciples had spent their last days with Jesus. It was the center of commerce and business. And so the church was spreading from Jerusalem out to these areas. It says, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John there. said, hey, we're going to send two of our leaders. We're going to go check it out. 
So when they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them. They had simply been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Jesus, then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Do you see it here? It is possible for you to be saved by grace through faith in a private commitment to Jesus. Nothing you can do to earn it. It is possible to, because of you have been saved, to let the world know through baptism. But there's a third immersion, if you will. Not water, a commitment to being filled with the person of the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about you barking like a dog, you know, flopping like a bass on the side of a pond. I'm talking about victorious power for you to live in today's world. And so Peter and John get there and they say, man, I'm so glad you gave your life to Jesus. I'm so glad that you went public with your faith. How about the Holy Spirit? Well, we, we were baptized into Jesus. And immediately, Peter knew they needed to be filled with God's Holy Spirit. How did Peter know? Let me tell you. We're going to talk about this in detail on Easter. I'll tell you something, man, Easter's going to be good. Start inviting your friends. It's going to be awesome. But Jesus, right before he's resurrected, right before he ascends back into heaven, the, the, you know, the big part of the story is that he ascends into heaven and an angel shows up and says, hey, don't be staring into the clouds. you got work to do, basically, Toby's translation. That's the part we know. Right before that happens, Jesus met his disciples on a beach to have breakfast. And here's what the Bible says, that Jesus breathed on them. Now, isn't that interesting here? As we look back at this pandemic, this season that has, for, for many, has attacked them in their respiratory system. Isn't it interesting after a summer of marches declaring we can't breathe that the resurrection story of Jesus and the birth of the church comes out of Jesus breathing, the pneuma, the breath, the Spirit of God onto his disciples. Why? Because Peter knew what Jesus had known that day, that without the power of being filled, baptized, immersed, committed to an ongoing relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit, we would never be empowered for the life that God has called us to. And so I want to, over the next two or three weeks, demystify for you what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, one of the things you're going to see in the book of Acts is they get filled over and over and over again. In fact, Paul's going to write later, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's a word in the Greek that means continual action. In, in other words, it's not a one-time event. You, yes, you get baptized or filled in, with the Holy Spirit. And then, quite honestly, because we're humans, we leak. And so you get filled again. And you get filled again. But it begins with the decision of, I don't, I'm not sure what all this means. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm a little scared of the Holy Spirit, but you know what? I'll, God has more for me than I have for me. So let me just personally finish by, by saying this. I found myself in three places in life. First place I found myself was, I just found myself uneducated about the Holy Spirit. I mean, it just wasn't something we talked about in our church. I was expressly told as a kid in my church that the Holy Spirit only works through the reading of the Bible. That's how the Holy Spirit works. And I want you to know uh, some of the most dangerous truths are half-truths. Yes, the Spirit does work through the reading of the Bible, but the Spirit of God still heals. He still gifts. He still speaks. He still moves. He still empowers. In fact, at the end of the book of Acts, you see again that a guy named Apollos and Paul go to Ephesus and these, they meet these new believers and say, have you, did you receive the Holy Spirit? And they said, how could we? We didn't know about it. We, did, we never even heard of the Holy Spirit. And so they laid hands and they received the Holy Spirit. And I spent a lot of time uneducated. And then I began to understand the Bible a little bit differently. But quite honestly, man, I, I I just wasn't ready to go there. Uh, I talk to people all the time, man, that I don't know any other way to say it than this. 
Like Jesus is fire insurance. <laughs> like I've got enough. Don't, don't, I don't want to go to, I, I, I have enough. I, I want to take some, look at me. We're living in days, in uncertain times. I don't know what the future holds, but I know this. Without God's power in my life, I'm done, man. You young families, look at me. Your kids, they deserve a parent filled with God's power. Enough is not enough. Jesus did not die on the cross simply to provide you fire insurance. He came to bring the power of the Holy Spirit into your life. And when I began to see that, yes, the Bible taught me about this baptism, this commitment, this immersion connection with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and when I got past this, hey, my world's fine. What, what do I need of that stuff? Because I got around people who were operating in the Spirit. Quite honestly, the, the thing that held me back the most, and I think this is where m many of you probably are, is I was just scared, man. Quite honestly, I was just scared that uh, God was going to turn me into some weirdo. And uh, I didn't, I don't have time to go into the whole thing today, but uh, man, I, I went to some of these events around the country. I called myself a spiritual rubbernecker, man. If it was weird, I wanted to go. And I went to these Holy Spirit rodeos, and, but I just held back, because well, I didn't want to roll around on the ground. You know, I didn't, I, I didn't want to, all of the things I was seeing, and when, when God showed me that the Holy Spirit's not weird, people are weird, and they're blaming the Holy Spirit for it. It happened one day when I read this verse, James chapter 1. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Look, whatever God has for me, it's good. Every perfect gift comes from above. God, God, He gives good gifts to His kids. And when I decided, when I chose to believe that God was good, now I'm positioned to say, hey God, whatever you want to do. Holy Spirit, would you come into my life and help me become everything that you destined for me to become? And it I mean, I don't have enough wisdom. I don't have enough gifting. I don't have enough self-control. I don't have enough self-discipline. Everything that I have is not close to what God has. So here's today what I want you to do. Coming up in the chat right now as you watch, there's an email address. It's T-O-B-Y-S at cross timbers with an S church.org. Uh, if you're of my generation, don't try to write it down real quick. Take a picture with your phone. You can go back to it. It's tobyes at crosstimberschurch.org. I, I want you to email me. This is an email that I promise you I will get it. I want you to email me. Uh, and I want you to put in the subject line. I want you to put forward. This is you saying I'm moving forward. And I want you to write there either number one, a number two, or number three. If you write number one, what you're saying to me is, Toby, I want to make a private commitment. I want to ask Jesus. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to begin this thing. And I pro here's the promise I make to you. Somebody from leadership at Cross Timbers will personally contact you and pray with you to help you receive Jesus into your life. If you put a two on that email, what you're saying is, Man, I made a private commitment. It's time for me to go public. Can you help me find a place to get baptized? Uh, maybe you're in the northern part of the country. It's too cold. And I used to go up in the mountains of Colorado with kids in the summer. They want me to baptize. I go, hey, let's wait till we get down, back down, because it was so cold. We'll find you a place indoors if you need it. We'll connect. We'll find somebody's swimming pool. We'll find a church building that you can use. We'll do whatever it takes to help you, but just put it to, send it. Somebody from Leadership Cross Timbers will contact you and we'll work through the logistics of helping you invite your friends, your neighbors, your CT at home group and be baptized. Number three though is saying, man, I've, I've given my life to Jesus. I'm saved, uh, but I want some of that power you're talking about today. I, I, all I have is, it, it's not enough. God has more than I have. I want all of God in my life. If you write down number three, I'm going to send you a little video. 
It's unedited. It's on my iPhone because my video guys that are around me right now are freaking out thinking they're about to make another. I'm just going to make a little video. I'm going to. I'm gonna get Chase to help me because he forgot more about this now. He's gonna show me how to turn it into a link and I'm gonna email you back a little video. And it's just a five minute think YouTube how to video. And it's gonna be how to begin a relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. How to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be baptized if that's the word you wanna use into the Holy Spirit. How to begin to walk with the Holy Spirit. And then over the next three weeks, we're going to show you, we're gonna show you practical ways that I promise you many of you have never heard practical ways that you can begin to be connected daily to the person of the Holy Spirit. So let me pray for you. Thanks for listening. I know we went long today. It's just, I, this, is, this is heavy on my heart. Look at me. I'm going to finish with this. Look at me. I believe that a page is turning, a new chapter, a new season is beginning. Uh, we're going to forget the former things, believe God is doing a new thing, but we're going to do it in somebody else's strength, the strength of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, thank you in Jesus' name so much. I just thank you for sending Holy Spirit, not a concept or an idea, but that you live in me, that you come upon me, that, that you want to empower me and make me the best version of myself, heaven's version of me here on earth. Lord, I'm praying right now in Jesus' name that there might be uh, in CG at home, living rooms, in private living rooms, there, there might be healing that begins to happen. That, that Holy Spirit, you would come through this little video and that people would go, wow, man, that God, God's starting to be my physical body. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He brings healing. I'm praying, uh, Lord, for those that today are making a commitment to Jesus for the first time, those who want to be baptized. Uh, I'm praying, Father, that over the next few weeks we hear hundreds of stories of testimonies of people who have received and have begun to walk in the power and the person of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Well, I thought that that message was really great today and we have a resource for you that's really gonna help you to begin to see what a relationship with the Holy Spirit looks like. Uh, and our hosts are gonna be able to help you uh, to get that download. Uh, we'll also put up the instructions here on the screen as well. But it's a 21 day prayer guide. And over the next 21 days, starting tomorrow, uh, we are together as a church uh, across all of our CT at homes and even our in-person locations are gonna take 21 days to be praying together, asking God's spirit to come and to empower us ultimately to receive hope and to give hope to others. And I wanna tell you, this prayer guide, this video that you're watching, all of these things happen because of your generosity. So thank you. Thank you for continuing to give, to sacrifice what God has blessed you with so that we can continue to give hope to people across the world. I hope that you guys have a great week. We will see y'all next week for part two of Power Up.